My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We have finished doing all the problems from this book. We are almost finished doing all the problems from this book. If there is a problem that gives you trouble and if you wish to watch the solutions to solution to it, you will find the solutions to almost all the problems from day number 251 through 400. From 251 through 400. This book, by the way, happens to contain the exact same problem in most cases and in most cases appearing on exactly the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We are doing we are finished doing all the problems from this book. In the event that you are in interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the process of doing quantitative comparison question. Quantitative comparison questions are very important questions, very big chunk of the exam still. They have not gone away. Unfortunately, the newer books do not provide us with enough practice questions on quantitative comparison problems. For that reason, we are doing some problems out of this book the 10th edition of the general GRE. We started solving quantitative comparison questions from day number 401 and right now we are on page number 280. Please turn to it, page number 280, problem number 15. Problem number 15. Problem number 15 would be an excellent demonstration as to why it is important to practice this question because otherwise uh, you will have some trouble you have to know what kind of beast this is. This is, this is. These are different kind of questions. These are not the sort of questions we deal with in our, in, our, in, our, in our school years. Do you understand? Here's what it says. In the real exam, when question number 15 was given, only 21% of the people, only 21% people, percent of the people got it right. Four-fifths of the people, approximately four-fifths of the people, had trouble with it. What I want you to do is, as always, I remind you, as, uh, I try to remind you every time, uh, as always, as soon as I finish setting up the problem, as soon as I finish setting up the problem on the blackboard, I will get out of your way and at that point you must pause the video. Pause the video, solve the problem yourself and then compare your work against the work that we do together. Do you understand? There is no bloody point in, in watching the solutions to the, solutions to the problem first and then say, well, let's see if I can do it myself. By that time it's too late. Do you understand? You will learn more by struggling, uh, struggling, struggling with it first yourself. Do you understand? Here we go. We are told that we have two quantities. We have x, which we are told is more than 1, and we have y, which we are told is more than 1. Both x and y, we are told, are more than 1. What we are being asked to compare are these two quantities. In, co in, column, in column B, we have 1 over x plus 1 over y, and in column A, we have 1 over 1 over x plus 1 over y. In other words, in column A, we have the reciprocal of the quantity that we see in column B. I will be now quiet, I will get out of your way, I will give you an unobstructed view of the blackboard. I will pause for about 5-6 five, five, seconds to, to give you enough chance to pause and unpause the video uh, so that you can solve the problem yourself. Do you understand? Here we go. Okay. What's going on here? Well, as always, there are a couple of ways we can tackle this problem. One way, as always, is what we call the traditional way, the orthodox way, the conventional way, the geeky way, the nerdy way, the academic way, the algebraic way. In other words, the way they expect you to solve the problem, the way your math teacher will expect you to solve this problem, which is the algebraic way. There's nothing wrong with it as long as, you, as, as, long as uh, you're good in algebra and you know exactly what to do with here, or what to do here, that's perfectly fine. But the quicker way, the more economical way, the smart way here would be to simply plug in numbers. Just plug in numbers and when you're plugging in numbers, it's always, it's always a good idea to think outside the bar. Don't think like a normal, normal person, you have to think of all the possibilities, weird scenarios. Do you understand? For example, here we are told that x has to be more than 1 and we are told that y has to be more than 1. They both have to be more than 1. The very first quantity that comes to my mind, the simplest scenario, is why not make them 2? I'm going to say the sentence one more time. I'm going to say the sentence one more time slowly and see what you, what you gather from it. Why not make them two? Yes, make them two. There is nothing in this problem. There is absolutely nothing in this problem that says that x and y cannot be equal. It, there is nothing in this problem that tells us that x, x is more than y or y is more than x. Nothing like that. 
Why not make them equal? Make them both 2. Keep it simple. And let's see what happens. Okay, watch what happens. If x is equal to 2, if x is equal to 2, and y is equal to 2, here we get half plus half, of course, which is 1. And here we're going to create 1 over half plus half, which is simply 1 over 1, which is again 1. The answer in this scenario is C. What we find is a very simple conclusion. The conclusion that we can arrive at, the conclusion that we arrive is that as long as if if they are both, if they are if they are if they are both equal to two, if both x and y equal to two, as we can clearly see here, as long as they are both equal to two, the answer is going to be C. If if they are if they are if they are not if they are not both equal to 2, if they are not both equal to 2, the answer will not be C. That's it, we are done. In one scenario the answer is C, in the other scenario the answer is not C. What the answer is in the other scenario really doesn't matter, it's a moot point. The point here is that before the answer was C, now it is not. And therefore the answer is D. Therefore the answer is D. And we don't have to do too much work actually in the real exam to see that if you were to plug in something other than 2 and 2 for both of them, answer will not be C. Maybe they are both 3, or maybe one is 2, the other one is 3. Let's try it out. You will see that the answer is not going to be answer is not going to be C. If one happens to be 2 and the other one happens to be 3, 1, one half plus 1 third is going to be 5 6. Here we have 5 6, and here we're going to have 6 fifth. Of course, 6 fifth does not equal 5 6. Maybe they are both equal to 3. Who knows? Maybe they are both equal to 3. If they are both equal to 3, here we are going to have 1 third plus 1 third. 1 third plus 1 third is 2 third. And of course, here we are going to have 3 halves. And 3 halves does not equal to 2 third. There you go. As long as, as long as they are both equal to 2, if they are both equal to 2, the answer is C. Right here. 1 over 2. X is equal to 2. You see? X is equal to 2. And Y is equal to 2. As long as they are both equal to 2, the answer is going to be C because we're going to end up with 1 over 1 here and we're going to end up with 1 over 1 here. Because here we're going to end up with 1 over half plus half. Half plus half is 1. 1 over 1 is 1. I'm explaining too much now. As long as they are both, both 2, the answer is going to be C. If they are not both 2, even if they are both equal to each other, maybe, maybe they are both equal to 5 or maybe they are both equal to 3 or maybe they are both equal to 17,000. It does not matter. As long as they are not both 2, the answer will not be C. If they are both 2, the answer will be C. And therefore the answer is D. That's all. We are done. Do you understand? That's all it is. As far as the exam is concerned, as far as the exam is concerned, we are done. What we are going to, what we are about to do from this point on, what we are about to do from this point on, for the rest of the video, everything that we do, everything that we are going to do in the rest of the video, will be a sheer waste of time in the real exam. To do what we are about to do in the real exam would be a sheer stupidity. Which is, for learning purposes, I'm going to show you here what is what exactly is going on behind the curtain. This is what we see on the stage. What we see on the stage is this scenario. If they are both two, the answer is C. If they are not both two, the answer is not C. This is what's going on on the stage. Let's find out what's going on behind the curtain. Let's find out what's going on behind the curtain. And to do that, we're going to have to solve this problem in a classical way, in an algebraic way. And we're going to do that, as I said, purely for learning purposes. So let's do it, shall we? It's actually not that bad, actually. You'll see in a second, it's not that bad. So let's do it here. We need to raise all of this thing. Okay. So here, the, co the common denominator is going to be x times y. x times y. And here, it's going to be y plus x. I'm not going to write down as y plus x. I'm going to write down as x plus y. So far, so good. But if that's the quantity here, then over here, the quantity that we're going to have is going to be a reciprocal of it. It's going to be x times y over x plus y. Are you with me so far? Now I'm going to digress here for a second to, to do an example, a numerical example, to make you understand what, what, what is about to happen next. So let's do a numerical example to understand what we're about to do next. The next step that we need to do before I do that, let me show you what's going on. Okay, here's, here's column A. Here's our column A. Column A, let's say it is 10 over 2. 10 over 2 is 5. In column B, we have 25 over 5. 25 over 5 is 5. As we can clearly see, these two columns are equal. 
Let's multiply both columns by 2. Let's multiply both columns by 2. When we multiply both columns by 2, this 2 drops out. Let's multiply both columns by 5. When we multiply both columns by 5, when we multiply both columns by 5, this 5 drops out. What do we end up in the first column? We end up with 5 times 10. We end up with 5. We end up with 5 times 10. And what do we end up here? We end up with 25 times 2. As we can see, 25 times 2 is 50, which is equal to 50. They are still equal. Of course they're going to be still equal. Why wouldn't they be still equal? Because we multiplied both columns by the same number. We can multiply and divide both columns by the same number as long as the number that you're multiplying by or dividing by is a positive number. Make a note of it if you didn't know it. We can multiply both columns with any time at all. Any time at all in your work, you can multiply both columns by any number that you want as long as the number is a positive number. At any time at all in your work, you can divide both columns by the same number as long as the number that you're dividing by is a positive number. Why does it need to be a positive number? Because if you want to multiply both columns by a negative number, it will switch the direction of the inequality. The direction of the inequality will switch. 3 is more than 2. Of course, everybody knows 3 is more than 2. Of course, nobody's going to argue with you that 3 is more than 2. But if I take my 3 and multiply it by negative 2, and if I take my 2 and multiply that by negative 2, now negative 6 is not more than 2. Negative 2 is in fact less than Ne less than negative 4. It's less than negative 4. I'm making too much fuss. Do you understand? 3, 3 is more than 2. 3 is more than 2. If, but if you multiply both sides by negative 1, then negative 3 is no longer more than negative 2. Negative 3 is less than negative 2. It switches the direction of the inequality. Don't do that. Don't mess with it. Do not multiply both columns by a negative number. Do not divide both columns by a negative number. But you can multiply or divide both columns by any positive number. Here, we are told that x is more than 1, hence x is positive. We are told that y is more than 1, hence y is positive. Therefore, x plus y is positive quantity and x times y is a positive quantity. Since this is a positive quantity and that's a positive quantity, that's what we're going to do. We're going to multiply both columns by x times y and x plus y. So watch what happens. I'm going to raise all those things. This is causing confusion. So what we're going to do before we go further, is the exact same scenario here. We're going to do the exact same thing, but in a little bit of a quicker way. Instead of doing, instead of showing all the baby steps, instead of showing all the baby steps, let's redo it a little bit quicker way. So here's the 10 over 2, and here is 25 over 5. The quicker way, instead of showing all the baby steps, is to simply cross multiply it. Start from the bottom and go to the top, wherever the arrow ends, we end up with 10 times 5 in this column. Here we have 2. 2 times 25 in this column, which is exactly what we had before. That's what we're going to do here. Let's cross multiply. We end up with, we end up with x times y, we end up with x times y squared. And let's take this quantity and that quantity and multiply, cross multiply there. We end up with x plus y, x plus y whole squared. x plus y whole squared. Are you still st are you still with me in the story? It's very important that you stay in the story with me. Do you understand? It's very important that you stay with me in the story. What do we do next? Well, it's very simple. This quantity is being squared, that quantity is being squared, which means we can legitimately take the square root of both quantities. If the square of this quantity is equal to the square of that quantity, then the square root of this quantity must also equal the square root of that quantity. And when we do that, what are you supposed to be fine? We find that x times y versus x plus y. This is what, this is the bottom line. They want you to compare, when they, when they give us quantity like this versus that, essentially what they want us to compare, the bottom line is that, once you analyze whole thing, what they want you to compare are these two quantities. They want you to compare the product of two quantities versus their sum. They want us to compare, this is what they're telling us. This is what they're telling us. We're going to rewrite the problem in a different way. This is not the real problem. This is not what the problem says. What the problem actually says is this, which is, which is, here is our column A. Here is our column A. They ask us to compare the product of two quantities. Product of two quantities. Product of two quantities versus column B. Their sum. Their sum. And therefore, and therefore, as long as they are both equal to 2, their product is going to be 
equal to their sum. Their product is going to be equal to their sum. The answer is going to be C. If they are not both equal to 2, it does not matter what they are. As long as they are not both equal to 2, their sum will never equal their product. The answer will not be C. If they are not C, the answer will not, if they are not both 2, the answer is not going to be C. And therefore the answer is D. Therefore the correct answer to this problem is D. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.